The Bifer Dolphin accident is one example of such a complex system designed to drill 20,000 feet into the Earth's crust. Mount Kilimanjaro is the highest mountain in Africa at just over 19,000 feet. So that's like sitting on the highest peak of Africa and drilling all the way down to sea level. And it drills that deep while sitting perfectly stationary in 1,500 feet of deep ocean. Because of the extreme health risks and the constant risk of untimely death, the U.S. government imposes a very long list of extremely strict regulations meant to mitigate the risk of sickness and death during saturation dives, ranging from constant equipment checks, timed dives, and forced time off. But despite these, resolution, these regulations, the risks have scared off enough people that saturation diving became one of the most specialized jobs in the country with the federal government listing less than 400 saturation divers as of 2021. Accidents involving saturation divers are thankfully very few and far in between. That being said, the Byford incident, the Byford Dolphin incident of 1983 was one of the saddest and most heartbreaking accidents involving saturation divers. But first, a quick look at the Byford Dolphin. This is the Byford Dolphin here. Semi-submersible, column-stabilized oil rig. Uh, we don't need all the details of it. 335 feet, 188 meters with a breadth of 221 feet or 67 meters and a depth of 120 feet or 36 meters. It's operational in water up to a depth of 460 meters or 1,500 feet with a maximum drilling depth of 20,000 feet or 6,100 meters. And at the time it was completed, it was the most advanced drilling equipment in the world at that time. However, although the equipment passed the strict levels of certification required, certification required by Norwegian law, which was probably DNV classification, uh, because that's uh, the Norwegian Classification Society, a part of the DNVGL uh, classification society that the Titan most certainly was not, because the people that were saying, you say you have... They, they, that was their, one of their criticisms was they kept saying to the owner of, of the uh, of the Titan, you say that you have greater safety standards than DNVGL classification society, but you haven't actually let DNVGL inspect your little pod. Um, the real Norwegian guys here, they, they they have their strict levels of certification and this the, the dolphin had all of these. The Bifur dolphin had all of these. Uh, it was operating Norwegian territory walters at the time. The Byford Dolphins equipment at the time of the incident had already been deemed obsolete and necessitated replacement, a fact that will be brought up during investigations. So they're using old equipment, outdated, obsolete equipment. To counter drift and ocean currents, the Byford Dolphin was equipped with its own engines capable of speeds of 4.5 knots. That's really slow. And this wasn't the first nor the last fatal accident the rig would see. In 1976, just three years after its launch, the Bifur Dolphin ran aground. Uh, six people died. In 2002, a Norwegian worker was killed during an unspecified industrial accident on the rig, uh, with a worker being struck on the head fatally with a piece of metal. Bonk. He got bonked. These accidents, although few, far apart, and involve separate different types of errors, not to mention the rig's lack of newer and better equipment and lower demand for oil tanks to green living and alternative energy sources resulted in it being laid up in 2016 with its remains being beached in somewhere in Turkey. So 2016, the Bifurd dolphin was sent out to pasture somewhere in Turkey. So now we're getting into the scientific part. here. What is the Bifurd dolphin incident? Edwin Coward and Roy Lucas were in chamber one of their compart of their compressed living quarters where they were resting. Meanwhile, Bjorn Bergensen and Truls Helvik were entering chamber two via a trunk that connected to the diving bell. So diving bell, chamber two, chamber one. Through the trunk. The trunk secured the bell to chamber two via the use of clamps, which were operated by diving tenders William Cramond and Martin Saunders. In a normal situation, the pressure within all of these chambers, the trunk and the diving bell must be kept in perfect balance. This ensures that the diving bell can be connected and disconnected from the chamber safely. The diving tenders are in charge of this procedure, and it must follow certain protocols. First, the diving bell door must be closed and secured. 
Second, the pressure in the diving bell is increased to help seal its doors. Third, chamber one must be closed off from the trunk. Fourth, the trunk that connects the diving bell and chambers is depressurized to a pressure of one atmosphere. Finally, the clamp is released, allowing the diving bell to be set free from the chambers. Oh, that sounds so nice. Dogs are hyperventilating down here. Although everyone in the team was highly experienced, a fatal and catastrophic explosive decompression incident happened, killing all four divers and one of the tenders, leaving tender Martin Saunders as the sole survivor, albeit with severe injuries. <laughs> no, diving tenders are nothing like chicken tenders. Initial investigation by the Norwegian government theorized that diving tender William Kremond had made the fatal error of releasing the diving bell before the diving bell's pressure could be increased and before sealing off chamber one from the trunk. Because the trunk, the living chambers, and the ocean itself all had different pressures of extremely varying degrees, the incident caused explosive decompression, instantly killing all the divers in the chambers with the trunk itself striking both tenders resulting in one fatality so the trunk blows off and hit the two and hit the two tenders that were outside the biford dolphin incident is also noted for the gruesome and violent deaths suffered by the divers although forensic reports say their deaths were near instant it was definitely not painless Medical reports did not specify which divers suffered what, and for good reason. Because of the intense pressure differences, the sudden and intense explosion decompression had caused three of the four divers' blood to flash boil. That's the first detail. Three of the four divers' blood flash boiled in an instant. Meanwhile, the fourth div div driver, he was the one that got sucked through the, through the uh, hatch, was severely mutilated and dismembered. After the rushing air caused by the decompression forced his entire body through a partially open doorway only 24 inches long, about 30 centimeters. Well, I guess it was about 50 centimeters, right? Yeah, sorry. Uh, severing various body parts even launching vital organs as far as 30 feet away. The explosion was so strong and so sudden that preliminary investigators noted that the fourth diver was mangled so precisely that they described some of the organs as being without damage, as if dissected out of the body. Due to its gruesome and heartbreaking results, the Biford Dolphin Incident precipitated the formation of the North Sea Divers Alliance, in coalition that lobbies for the protection of North Sea divers. Formed from, formed from the relatives of all six victims of the Biford Dolphin Incident, the group filed a lawsuit against Dolphin Energy, citing the lack of safety equipment on board the rig and questioning whether the cause truly was human error. As we said, 26 years later, Finally, in 2008, after 26 years of lobbying, the North Sea Divers Alliance obtained a report that showed without a doubt that the real cause of the Biford Dolphin it's, excuse me, incident was not human error. Rather, it was faulty equipment, with the trunk clamps being cited as one of the prime suspects in the incident. At the time of its completion, the, the, the Biford Dolphin was using state-of-the-art drilling equipment of its era, with all of its components passing the very strict regulations of the Norwegian government. However, as time went on, many of its components became obsolete, with very little being done to keep them up to date. By 1983, most of the equipment on board the Biford Dolphin during the incident was already considered obsolete, with many of the same types of equipment actually banned from Norwegian waters because of their failure to adhere to then updated regulatory requirements. And here's where we start to go back full circle to a lot of these causes of the uh, maritime incidents we talk about on Maritime Monday. Management issues. While, while this may not be, be corruption it, you know, or you know, greed or whatnot, it can be kind of an indifference. You know, you, you make the money, you're making money fine. Uh, so you don't need to spend money to upgrade what's already working fine. It's obsolete. It's outdated. Yes, but it hasn't killed anybody yet. Oops. Yes, it has. 
<laughs> this forced the Norwegian government, where the Bifurd Dolphin was operating at the time, to pay compensation to the surviving victims and, and the family of the victims and completely absolving William Crammond of any and all responsibility for the accident. Finally, in 2016, after 42 years and increased demand for renewable energy resources, the Bifurd Dolphin was finally put to rest. It's a sad reminder to everyone that despite more than half a century of research, we only know a terrifyingly small amount when it comes to the science of decompression and saturation diving. Hmm. 